If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. Today is our Ascend program where we do readings and sound healings and things like that. And I'm your host, Kelly Sparta. I'm a transformational shaman, spiritual coach. And today we're going to do a reading for Michelle Douglas. And Michelle's actually in my spiritual coach mastermind group and, and the Ascend program. And so when I put out a call for readings for the beginning of this podcast, that she was like, me, me, me. I'm like, awesome. So Michelle actually did a wonderful reading for me not too long ago. So I thought it was only fair to uh, return the favor. <laughs> so here we go. So Michelle, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to do this exactly like I would if you were coming in for a spiritual evolution energy review, which we affectionately refer to as a seer reading. The process is basically very simple. We start with a look at your aura, and then we look at each of your chakras individually and tell you if there are any blocks that we see in your chakras. And if so, what they are, if there's a quick fix, I will give it to you in the moment. If there isn't, then we will put a you know, put a pin in it and come back to it at the end. <clears throat> For the purposes of the podcast, I'm going to keep the video on because we are going to post this on YouTube. But in a traditional reading of this kind, we would turn the video off so that you would know I wasn't reading your micro expressions or things like that, that it was purely an energy read. Uh, but I'm probably going to have my eyes closed for a lot of it anyway. So you're probably not going <laughs> to have a question about that. So the question uh, that I have for you is, do you want a personal energy review or do you want a business energy review? I'm thinking business. Okay. So a business for you, because you're a small business owner, a business review is going to be an expansion of the personal energy review. So, yeah. All right. So this is, it's going to be a longer episode because they take a little bit longer. It's okay. Um, Sorry. I did, <laughs> that's why we started early. Cause I had a feeling that was going to be the case for you. So <laughs> See, you must be psychic. <laughs> ah, go figure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to, can I assume that you have a familiarity with the chakra system? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I don't have to yes. describe each yes. individual I chakra. Do. Okay. No. And what I'm going to say is that ask your questions in the moment because I am channeling when I do this. And so memory works very differently when, when I channel. It doesn't store most of what I say. So mm -hmm. if you ask me two days from now, hey, what about this thing? Maybe I'll remember. Maybe I won't. Okay. Yeah, so sounds but like me. In, but, but really try to, to ask your questions in the moment. Feel free to interrupt me if you need to. The purposes of seeing a timely on this, when you ask a question, ask the question. Don't go into a lot of story or else yeah. we'll be here for two hours. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yes, so, got it. It's a lot of information. If you have any electronics around you, put them on do not disturb so that you don't get other people's energies filtering into your field. Um, and you may want to take some notes because yep. it's going to be a lot. Yeah. Um, people, people go, oh yeah, it's a lot. And then we get to the end, they go, oh my God, that was a lot. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my notebook. All right. So. All right. So let's sit. Okay. So do I have permission to enter into your energy field for the purposes of this reading? You do. Thank you. Okay. Give me one moment. Oh, yes. If you have any shields up, this would be the time to make a little Kelly size hole in them because I have, do have to come into your aura to do that. <clears throat> I'm just heated up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been told I tickle. I've been told I'm warm. <laughs> I've been yeah, told you definitely heated me up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm just, I'm going to start outside of your aura for a moment okay. just because on a business scan, it's usually more important. Interesting. I have some cotton balls around you and I'm not, not like cotton balls, like an entire layer of cotton around you. Are you having a hard time being seen? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm seeing 
like this big insulative cotton, you know, it's probably like, I don't know, like three, like two or three feet deep, right? It's like, nope, you can't see me. I am being buffered from the world. Excellent. Right? <laughs> Just yes. what all business yes. owners. So okay. we'll talk about that when we get yeah. there. Let me see here. What else? Anything else? Nope. You're cook. Oh, they're telling me you're cocooning. That's what I'm saying. It's not, it's not, it's not cotton. It's, it's cocoon silk, right? Uh, or, yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're in your chrysalis phase is what they're saying, which means the inside's going to be all gooey. So great. Okay. Let's come into your aura and hope I don't get all. I've just got this amazing right. image in my mind right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> let me come into your aura. Yeah, so it is kind of gooey in here. I often see people in water in their auras, mm -hmm. but yours is more gel-like. Uh, so I'm, I'm getting this sort of walking through molasses sort of feel right? It's, it's that sense of I'm making progress, but it's so slow. Mm -hmm. So given the chrysalis imagery that they gave me on the outside, the, the gel on the inside makes sense. You're trying to make progress before you fully come into form as this new being. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And so what they're saying is for you to do what you know to do now and don't try to do anything else. Because, you know, I know that you're, you're doing your business. You want to make some money. You want to keep things going. Yeah. But, you know, now is not the time to push. Now is the mm -hmm. time to be with and to wait to see what emerges. And... So they, you know, I, I know that you and I talked and you're doing these amazing short little, well, not really short, right? You're, no, you're, <laughs> they take a little while. <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're doing these, these recorded readings, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, you gave me a mini one. So yeah, the, your normal ones are big. So the, what they're saying is that the recorded readings, you're doing Akashic work, right? Yeah. 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 So <clears throat> what they're saying is that, that, just stick with those for now. Okay. And don't worry about what comes after that because yeah, you're, yeah. you're not the person you need to be to make that thing yet. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Now let's see here. What else? Nope. Oh, that's it for the aura. Okay. So let's come into the seventh chakra. Okay. Check in your energy flow. A lot of energy in, not a lot of energy out. So let me check your route real quick for the energy flow there to see what's going on. Are you moving? You don't look like you're moving. No. So there's no grounding happening. And I've only got energy flow in from the top, which makes sense now because it, there's no energy left to go out. So what we want to be is a circuit between earth and sky. And so there is a free guided meditation for called the tree meditation on my YouTube channel. Yep. And so if you go there, this is a quick fix. So yep. the tree meditation three times a day will fix this for you. Okay. okay. Now, let me talk about the reason why this happens. Okay. Let me check your root again. I don't normally go straight to the root, but I'm, we're going to do things differently today. <laughs> Doing what I'm told. So, okay. Yeah. So there's, there's a steel plate under your feet in your root chakra. Mm. And what that means is that you have given someone else in your life permission to pass judgment on you and pull your feet out from under you at any moment by saying they don't approve. Usually yeah, a parent feels like a mom. Oh, no. No? No, not mom. Okay. 
It's usually a parent or a parent cool. figure. Both of them brilliant. Okay. Well, there's yeah. there's someone in your life who's hold, holding authority over your life. That's what the steel plate means. Is that we we have said, oh, here, you know, I is it okay? Am I okay? Am I okay? Am I okay? And that's that's the yeah. thing there. So it's hard to get to ground when you have a steel plate under your feet. So the, there's yeah. a quick solution yeah. to this. Well, a simple solution to this. Not always a quick solution. solution. And so that one is revoke permission. Yep. Just say, I'm not asking permission anymore. So, and then that, as I said, it's a simple one, but not always an easy one, depending upon who, who the person is and how much yeah. you, you're trying to get approval and, and get their love through their approval and the whole nine yards, right? So. Yeah. Could be a couple of people, but yeah, I okay. think I know who it is, but. Okay. Okay. All right. So, all right. So let's see here. Yeah. So what I was looking for was whether or not you were in the energetic fetal position, which is something that I see from people if they feel under attack. Uh, I am not seeing that with you. It is a steel plate issue and just not having enough energy to put it back out when you're done because you've used it all, right? Because mm-hmm. you've only got one entry pl- point at this point. So. Yeah. You know, this this sort of thing would result in, you know, being tired a lot and, you know, not having as much to give as you think you should. And, you know, being like, I, I, am I really just getting this old? No, you're not getting that old. Your energy field is screwed up. So tree meditation. Okay. All right. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, I will do right. that one. Yeah. So let me see what else is in here. Oh, definitely got some mind on overdrive going on. Brain is spinning a million really? miles. A <laughs> <laughs> well, see, this will also be solved by the just do what you're doing. Don't try to do anything else, right? Yeah. Because your brain can't go blah, 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 blah when you're just doing what you're doing. You're like, I already know how to do this. I've already got this. I'm good. Yeah. I'm just going to be here, right? When you mm-hmm. let go of that need to do more, be more, have more whatever, so that you can finish crystallizing, um, then the mind on overdrive is going to drop automatically. So we don't have to worry about fixing that one. That's going to fix itself. Okay. And so let's see here. Okay. Masculine energies looks good here. Masculine lives in the crown. The feminine lives in the root. So we'll talk about that at the bottom. The masculine energy looks good here. Well, you definitely know your channel because you're already doing that. So I don't have to tell you that. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see here. What else? Anything else I need to know in this chakra? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. I, I, okay. 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 <laughs> your guides are like, would you just tell her to sit down and listen to us? She listens to us for readings for everybody else, but she doesn't listen to us for herself. Would you just tell her to sit down and listen to us? We've been trying to talk to her for a while now. And she's not freaking listening. So, so I'm literally, this is how, what they're saying to me. <laughs> it's just like, like I have told you now that, that like there, I have so many tingles on my head because they're like, you know, Oh God! Yeah. So okay. all right. If, 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 if it makes you feel better, mind do that too. <laughs> oh, excellent. I'm so glad. I'm not alone. Because you know we're so busy reading for other people, we forget to listen for ourselves. I I, I get it. I do. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, so you know, my bad too. So, but my <laughs> was, the reason it was probably so intense is because my guys were probably probably piling on. They were probably tapping them on the shoulder too to say. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, they were probably piling on there. <laughs> so, okay. So you and I both have an, um, <laughs> we have an assignment to sit down the and listen to our guides for a while. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So I think that's everything for this chakra. Yes. Okay. Yes. They that agree. was the crown, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That was the crown. So we're going to come yeah. down into the sixth. So yep. that's the third eye. Yep. And now we're going to, let me take a look. I'm going to, so you have a transmitter and a receiver. And I'm going to check on the transmitter. The mm-hmm. transmitter, well, is, I know it works because you've done a reading for me, but I'm going to check it anyway, because mm-hmm. that's just good form. All right. Oh, yeah. Nice, strong outflow. Hmm. 
So you're bringing back some of what you could bring back, but the outflow is far stronger than the inflow on that. And so I would say that I would sit with how much am I allowed to know? Because when there's a strong outflow and the inflow is is restricted, let me let me take a look at your receiver and hold on. No receiver is wide open. Wow, that's mm-hmm. good. So, so your receiver is what we think of as our intuition. So I'm telling you this just so that you know that you're picking up on in the environment around you. It's not the I'm going out to the akashic and gra- grabbing the information and coming back. Yeah, this right? is Different. in general daily life. You mean? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. So you're you've probably got the strongest intuition I've seen on anybody I've read. So, really? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like Ooh. I think I'm too much in my head because I don't feel that sometimes. <laughs> no, it's it's pretty intense. So wow. the the transmitter though is being limited, and so mm-hmm. it's it's going out, but it's not coming back as strongly as it could, which is kind of kind of awesome for the fact that your reading was so good in its current state. <laughs> Imagine what it could be in its advanced state. So that's going to be really. <laughs> oh, it could be amazing. <laughs> So the, the question here is to, to sit with yourself and be like, why am I not receiving everything I'm, I'm capable of getting? Because that is the question, right? That is the key here is to make sure that you're, usually these are belief-based. If you can't get it, the energy back yep. in, it's because you don't want to be responsible for what you see. You don't want to feel too powerful because that would intimidate you. You know, these, yeah. th- these are usually the reasons that are behind these things, right? Yeah. You're afraid to know too much. You know, there's just sometimes these are these are inner beliefs that stop us from being in our full power, right? Mm-hmm. So that's that's something to take a look at. And then, all right, let me see. So the other piece that lives here is the fear of your own power. And so I'm going to take a look for that and see what Mm -hmm. that looks like. Being able to stand in your power. Okay. So this, I got an image of owning your power thing and I have you standing with your hands on your hips and a superhero cape flowing out behind you, but you're standing on bubbling quicksand type, well, more like bubbling lava and you're sinking into the lava. So it's, it's the, yeah. here I come to save the day, right? It's that, that sort and of then you get <laughs> and then <laughs> you crash and being undermined by your own insecurities mm-hmm. around whether or not you can hold it. Right. There's a a way in which you're like, yes, I can do this. I've got this. I've got this. I'm awesome. Look at me. And then, you know, being slowly eaten from the bottom. Right. (laughs) It's just like (laughs) totally absorbed into the earth. So excellent. uh, Yeah. So so this is about, let me, let me just see what this is. Hold on. Let me look at the bubbling goo because they don't normally give me a picture on this one. So you're unique in a couple of ways now. So very special. (laughs) All right, so the bubbling down at the bottom is insecurity, imposter syndrome. Yay. Oh, yay. Yay. That's what this one is. So you're asking yourself the question, what if I'm not good enough? And I would ask you to, to change the question to what if I'm amazing? Yeah. Because it's equally likely, right? You know, we, we yeah. always question the, the, the negative. We don't question the positive because the positive scares the crap out of us. But you're doing okay with the positive because you're in your superhero stance, right? Yep. So you've got, you've just got a habit of asking yourself, what if I'm not good enough? What mm. if I can't do it? What if, what if, what if? What, so, so there's a what if in here of, you know, what if I, what if I humiliate myself? Mm. right yeah, what if I'm, I'm always surprised when a client comes back and goes oh my god that was so amazing I'm like really yeah. <laughs> yeah, you and every other reader on the planet who hasn't been doing it for 30 years <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had that same thought 25 years ago and I was just like always in this state of oh my god can I actually do this and, and then they'd all come back and I'd be like 
that's cool. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Eventually, you just learn to trust the process, but it takes a long time yeah. to get to that point. Okay. So oh, great. The more readings you do, the faster it comes, just for the record. Yeah. So, okay. But I would encourage you to, to say, what if, what if I'm actually awesome? Mm -hmm. And it feels like if you ask that question often enough, if you reinforce that question for yourself, it feels like that actually helps to open up that transmitter receiving piece mm -hmm. um, because yeah, there's the, the, this question at the under uh, uh, this question under your feet here is what is actually causing some of the, not, not all of it, but some of it, some of the receiving side issue on the transmitter. Okay. So it, there's a responsibility piece in here that that's, you know, what if I'm, what if I say something and somebody takes an action uh, based on it and then I'm responsible for it, blah, 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 right? And you are not responsible for it because they are competent humans capable of running mm. their own lives and you are not their mother, nor are you yeah. their life runner. You know, just because somebody has taken a piece of advice that you've given them and put it into play doesn't make you responsible for their actions, right? They, yeah. they could have ignored that piece of advice and chosen differently, right? Yeah. That's their sovereign. Free will, right? Right? Mm. That's how we all go. We all roll yeah. that way. It's like, oh, I chose to take that piece of advice. And now I'm sitting here going, hmm, what? Yeah. Yeah. So, but, you know, and, and you and I both know that even a quote unquote bad outcome is often the right outcome. Yeah. Because when we look back in our lives, sometimes we have to do things that hurt in order to yes. get to the next place. My husband and I were talking about that the other day. We were listening to something, some video somewhere, I don't know. And they were talking about, you know, if you could tell your younger self one thing, what would you tell them? And we both went, nothing. And because if I tell myself my younger self something, I don't be the person I am today when I'm yeah, at, exactly. at the end of it, right? Any change changes who I am and I'm really happy with who I am and where <laughs> I am. I'm not changing a damn thing. Even if yeah. it would have prevented some pain, it, it, the pain was necessary to get where I am. So exactly. the longer you go in this work, the more you realize that the quote unquote painful or you know wrong moments were actually very right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, this is a take yourself off the hook responsibility wise. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, all right. Uh, anything else in this chakra? Let me check. Mm, yeah. Okay. So you have a little bit of creativity usurped by the mind in here. And that's a, uh, that's where you're stealing your creative uh, energies and pulling them out of where they should be in the second chakra, pulling them up into the sixth and trying to manage them with your mind because your mind is on overdrive. Right. Right. Your brain is going, la, 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 la. I must control everything. The mind on overdrive <laughs> is also a control pattern just for the record. So yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, you know, but I'm telling everybody who's listening to. So yeah. Um, yeah, no, I do need to work on that. <laughs> so, as you're being and the mind on overdrive is relieving, then the creativity usurped by the mind will relax unto itself. So, so this is not a, you know, focus on this. This is a symptom of the mind on overdrive for you. So, yeah. so this is one of the things that we're going to do as we go through this process is I'm going to say, look, these are blocks that are here, but don't focus on this one. It's a symptom. Focus on the cause right? Yeah. And when you focus on the cause, these other symptoms will go away. So the, the, mm -hmm. the cause right now is your chrysalis state, the mind on overdrive and the creativity usurped by the mind are symptoms. Don't bother worrying, working on those, just be in your chrysalis state, stop trying to do, and those will automatically go away. Okay. Yep. okay. So we're going to make this as simple as possible. Oh, I did forget to tell you something. Well, um, don't take the number of blocks that I find as a report card, because Every no. time we do this, what we're reading is the level that you're on in terms of the work that you're doing. And if you've just gotten onto a new level, you will have a lot of blocks. If you are just about to clear a level, you will have a few blocks. Yeah. But it's not an indicator of your overall life report card. It is an indicator of, no. of where you are in the level. So I, I didn't yep. usually say that. No, that's fine. Too. 
It's early in the morning for me. It is late at night for me. AM in the morning for me, and Michelle's down in Australia, so it's late at night for her. So we're having we're having a party. So okay, all right. So let me. Is that everything for the sixth chakra? Yes. Okay. So okay. we're coming down into the fifth chakra. I usually get this one physically for the overall, so bear with me. Okay. So you see my mouth? That's not, I don't thought it's just a, a little bit of opening. Does this mean I need to talk more? <laughs> this is, well, this is about your energy for self-expression. Okay. okay. So we're like, uh-huh, right here. And then, yeah. but I'm, the, there's no energy coming out, which is not surprising because you're in that chrysalis state. Okay. This is right. not something I would fix right now because it's not time. Right. But the good news yep. is your mouth is already open. It's not open wide, but it's open and it's ready when the energy aligns for you, when you're, when you mm -hmm. emerge from your chrysalis. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I feel pretty good about what I'm seeing here. Okay. okay? Good. Yep. Yeah. So, okay. Let's see what we have. Yes. We have some dependence and asking for permission. This feels like it goes back to that steel plate under your feet. So dependence and asking for permission is a child energy. So I often find that people in this work are living, that, that their inner child is often driving the bus, right? And mm -hmm. that's because in childhood they it needed to, but this is a... This is a child energy that is related to looking for approval. So dependence and asking for permission is looking for approval. And mm. so again, this is about taking the child out of the driver's seat in this regard and just stepping in as the adult. So this is the best way to do this is to literally look at the child and say, oh, baby, you did such a good job. How about you go play in the back of the bus and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drive the bus for a while now, right? <laughs> we don't want to get down on ourselves because the, the child yeah, did yeah. the best they could. And we mm -hmm. just you know, we t step into our adult self and be like, okay, I'm driving the bus now. And I am the one making the decisions for me and my business. I am not relying on someone else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. So it's one thing to get input and advice it's another thing to abdicate responsibility yeah okay yeah yeah okay so uh so i see a little bit of people pleasing communication not a lot but a little bit it's a yeah it, it this is a conflict avoidance pattern again it's another <laughs> child pattern right um, yep it's an old one that one yeah. And so it feels like you've been working on this one, but the, this one is something I would absolutely pay attention to and work on more. Uh, yeah. the, the solution to this one is to accept that sometimes you're not going to agree with people and it's okay to take up your own space. Yeah. That is the solution to this particular block, right? Absolutely. And it's easier said than done sometimes, but you have to be willing to be with the conflict mm -hmm. and, and the key in this case is to uh, is to speak up early yeah. because the reason that we are so uh, resistance resistant to the uh, the conflict is because we wait way too long to say Absolutely. something and then we've built up this huge charge and then we like explode and it becomes this huge deal right whereas if you had just said something in the beginning like don't do that <laughs> that yeah. would have been the end of it right mm -hmm. um, Assuming you have someone who respects boundaries, and if not, it's a what what part of the word no did you not understand is the second part yeah. is the, it's the yeah. response when they ignore your boundary. It's like what part of no did you not understand? You know, what why is it that you feel the need to walk all over my boundaries? Because this is not acceptable behavior, and if it if you continue this, I will remove you from my life. That is a very simple concept, right? So yeah. this you know those are the three steps to get out of it is to speak early reinforce your boundary, double reinforce and threaten to, to leave. And if necessary, leave. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So that is the three step or four, four step. If you have to process. Yeah, of it's not a big problem at the moment, but it has been in the past. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, but there's, there's some of that still, still going mm -hmm. on in there. Let me see. Okay. This was the one piece that I was looking for in here when I first saw it, but 
the crystal has changed it. So let me see. Uh, okay, so you're jack in the boxing. Okay, so there's a there's a block that I like. So, so let me tell you what these terms are that I'm using. There are 38 common blocks that I've found over the 3,000 energy scan energy reviews that I've done, and those are common to people on a spiritual path. So nobody has all of them. Everybody has some of them. So that's what yeah. I keep looking for in this. And then I look for whatever else is there. So just yeah. it's, it's my own shorthand that I've created over doing 3000 of these things. So <laughs> um, the, this one is hiding your true self, right? It's trying to be invisible. In most cases, this usually comes out of an abusive environment. I know that's not true for you. Oh, first marriage was. So oh, okay. that could be All right. It. That makes sense. Yeah. Then. Okay. Yeah. So, but typically if you can't be seen, you can't be attacked, right? Yeah. The problem yeah. is when you're living in this as a business owner, then you don't get seen as a business, mm. right? Yeah. Yeah. So again, this is a bit a- of a problem. <laughs> yeah, this is an accepting the consequences for your, for whatever being seen brings you. Okay. Mm-hmm. In a lot of cases, there's also a past life piece around this of being killed for mm. your gifts. Mm. And it's like, I got killed for my gifts. I don't want to get killed for my gifts again. Yeah. Right. And, and the answer to that one is very simple. Nobody gets out of this life alive. Might as well die <laughs> for something you believe in. Right. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> it's just like, got to die somehow. Yep. Doesn't really matter how, right? So it's just an acceptance of your own mortality and being like, yeah, all right, whatever. And um, that comes into letting go of judgment too, doesn't it? Yeah. Fear of judgment. Yeah. Yeah. Fear of judgment is a huge one. We'll see that in the third chakra. Yeah. So, okay. Yep. So the, but the hiding, so you're jack in the boxing right now. So you're like, hi, I'm here. Nope, I'm not. Hi, I'm here. No, I'm not. Hi. Oh, oh God. You are so <laughs> accurate. Because <laughs> I kind of put myself out there and I'm like, oh, I'm going to hiding again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. And when I put myself out there, I get results. Right. So yeah. the easy solution to this as a business owner is just to hire someone to continue the putting the out there. Mm-hmm. And then it's not dependent upon you. And then you are, are on the hook to be responsible to them to get them content. And then it becomes about you fulfilling your promise to them, which you're better at than about you f- fulfilling a promise to yourself, right? So yeah. when you get another person involved, there's a reason I have co-hosts on my podcast, because if I didn't, I would never do it, right? <laughs> and it gives me somebody to talk to. I but, a good point. But, you know, it's easier to be responsible to somebody else, right? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, even if you just Accountability, get right? Philippines, you know, that you can hire that's, you know, it's not terribly expensive to hire somebody from the yeah. Philippines or from India. Or oh, I've got it. I should actually engage them. <laughs> There's a thing. Novel concept, right? <laughs> Very <Yeah>. novel. <laughs> Little yeah. So when you get that done, oh boy. your jack in the box will clear up. Okay. Yeah. Because then it's going to become a, just a thing that you do rather than a, I have to be visible. I can't be visible. I have to be visible. I can't be visible. Right. So that is, that is a solved in the real world problem. I like things that I can solve in the real world. We, we do a yeah. lot of grounded woo here. Um, you know, everybody's like, oh, let's solve it in the energetic. Mm, some things just have yeah. better practical solutions, right? Absolutely. So let's, let's stick with the practical. Okay. Yep, I agree. Oh, they're showing me something around finances now, which is not mm-hmm. something I usually look at here, but they're, okay. So what they're saying is that there's another practical piece around finances, that there's a way in which you are hiding from your finances, that you're, yeah. you're sort of stretching around looking at and planning your finances. It's like you don't, yep. there's no budget. There's no, it, it's almost like you're like, it'll take care of itself. It'll be fine. I'm not going to look at it. Right. So for that, I would really highly recommend picking up a copy of the book Profit First by Michael McCallowitz. It is 
the single best book around managing small business finances I have ever read in 35 years in business. Okay. It changed oh, my wow. life as a business owner. So yeah, I would highly recommend picking up a copy of that. So don't go out to Amazon now. Just write it down. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, see you. I see you. Write it down. <laughs> Profit first, Michael McCallowitz. That's Michael. Michael. Yep, I've Michael written that. W I C Z, I think. Okay. So it's Michael Michael twice. But yeah, Michael McCallowitz. And okay. so that is going to help you to you know, manage your finances better and understand how to manage your finances as a business owner. You okay. know, I was incredibly financially savvy, but nobody had ever taught me how to manage my business finances and how to budget and how to know what to do and what not to do and things like that. Yeah. So it's super useful. Okay. okay. So anything else in this chakra? No. Okay. So coming into the fourth chakra. Okay. So I feel this huge heart chakra opening going out where you've given lots of love to the world and receiving nothing. <laughs> I get the little really. <laughs> Really, I had no idea. Yes, no, that's that's exactly what we're talking about here. Receiving nothing, right? Mm. So, uh, just for the record, in your family, is gift giving one of the love languages that your parents use? Oh, I... no! It's more words of affirmation, I think. Okay. How about in your relationship? He's a doer. So what is it? What would you, what's that one? Um, acts of service. Acts of service. Yeah. Okay. So typically what I see, let me see if this is true for you. Mm, no. Okay. So oftentimes I will see people who have a lack of receiving and their businesses don't receive a lot of money because they have conflated love and money. Those, those are inextricably linked, right? But for you, this is really more of a approval. I, I keep coming back. There's a massive theme of approval in here. Mm. Okay. And so this is an approval, a deservingness, a good enoughness. You know, there's a, you know, you have to work to deserve it sort of thing, right? Mm. So I'm going to yeah. blow your brain, brain right now. Okay. Deserving is a made up term. It is a made up term by people who want to control you. Mm. Okay. Because if we are all infinite beings of infinite creativity and we are all the universe, how can we yeah. pass? How, how does the, the deserving is not a, a, a thing. Yeah. Everything is ours already. There's no deserving, right? There's yeah. We no have whatever earning. we want. Right. There's no earning it. So no. this thing is a made up term to, by people who want to control you. It's a dominance mm -hmm. term. It is a function of duality and you can leave it behind anytime you choose. All you have to do is just claim that it's yours to begin with. Yeah. Okay. By, by buying into deservingness, we, we limit ourselves inherently. Yeah. Okay. And so this is what this feels like for you. Yep. Yeah. So I have an exercise for you. It's going to take you a while, but it'll be a good exercise. <laughs> okay. Okay. I want you to sit down every morning for five minutes. Not long. Yeah. You can do it for longer if you want, because a lot of people find this very enjoyable. Yeah. But I want you to sit down for five minutes every day, because here's the thing about love. Love never leaves our energy field. Love unreceived yeah. sits in our energy field forever. And so I want you to spend five minutes a day receiving all the love that you never received. Mm. Okay. And that five minutes a day, and it's, it, it's important to do it five minutes a day, not 15 minutes every three days, right? Yep. Because what you want to do is get yourself in the habit of receiving. 
Yep. <clears throat> and so the other piece I want you to do is I want you, when you're out and about in the world, anytime somebody moves out of the way on the sidewalk, lets you out in traffic, opens the door for you, smiles at you, whatever. It's, it's so much easier to receive love from strangers because we don't feel like it comes with an obligation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Especially if we've been in an abusive relationship of some kind, oftentimes love has come with an obligation. If you love me, you'll do this. Or I'll give you this much love and you give me that much love. Yep. So with strangers, it's much easier to receive because there's no chance of an obligation, right? Yep. And so what I want you to do is every time somebody does something like that for you, I want you to receive it as a gift of love. Say, oh, mm-hmm. they're loving me right now. Mm-hmm. And then you will find that you will have this really wonderful response to it. So when somebody opens a door for me and I receive it as a gift of love, I'm like, Thank you. I just feel so much love. And I have this, and I just have this overflow of love to, to share back with them in my thank you. And that you can see it light them up because I'm just like, <sighs> right. I'm so yeah. happy. Right. Yep. And yep. so, you know, the goal is not to make them feel better. The goal is for you to receive the love and then you will automatically end up making them feel better. That's just the nature of the beast. But the goal is for you to receive the love. Do not focus on what you give back. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. I can do that one. Yeah. And so that's a good practice as well on this one. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yep. So the other piece of if you're receiving love from someone in your surroundings, someone you know. Then the other thing is to remember that love does not come with an obligation. It is unconditional. Yeah. If someone else wants to put an obligation. That's not a problem anymore. (laughs) It used to be, but not now. Yeah. Yeah. But if somebody else puts an obligation on it, you can drop that obligation Mm -hmm. on the floor. There is no requirement. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. So, all right, let me see what else is here. Ooh, a little bit of betrayal going on in the back. Oh, so okay. there, this this feels this feels older. So I don't know how long ago that relationship was for you, but this feels older. Yeah, uh, twenty plus years ago. Yep. Yeah, it's still here. It's still in your heart chakra. So uh, the thing to remember about betrayal is that people will always tell us who they are. I had a boyfriend once years ago who said, somebody, believe everything somebody says in the first three times you meet them, because they're always telling you the truth about themselves. Mm, And yeah, I'm just thinking maybe it could have been the second marriage. (laughs) You broke up, which was a bit more recent. We split. 14 years ago, 14 years ago, that was, that ended. Yeah. And so, you know, they, they will always tell you the truth about themselves. Don't make excuses for them. Don't try to save them. Don't try to anything. Just believe who they say they are in the first three. And I have found that that's true. (laughs) I took that to heart and was like, wow, I did my own empirical study on that one. And it has been experience. The thing that I would say is betrayal is an interesting thing because We ask someone to be someone that they're not, Mm. even agree to be someone that they're not. And then we feel betrayed when they are someone, when they are exactly who they are. With the exception of compulsive liar who believes their own lies, which I've had an experience with someone like that. But with the exception of that, typically we are complicit in the betrayal. Oh, absolutely. I, I think this is all quite, yeah, like over a decade ago. All this yeah. Stuff. yeah. Yeah. So, so the key here is to recognize that you made that choice. Yeah. You participated. And mm-hmm. now you can, you, you can say, I learned this from it because anytime we have a challenge like that, we have to recognize and learn that we learned from it. And then we just say, okay, I, I, this was the price I paid for the lesson much like, you pay money for a class or, you know, your university or whatever with, this was the price I paid to learn that lesson. I have learned the lesson now and I'm yep. complete, right? Yeah. So you just need to let it go because this is not stuck anymore. It's just still there. Cause you never say to tell it to go away. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah. I'm happy to let it go. Cause I'm, yeah. 
well and truly moved on from that. Yep. Okay. Okay. Cool. So let me see. There's still some grief in here from that relationship too. So there is a clearing grief meditation. It's on my YouTube channel. It'll be coming out again here on the podcast. If it hasn't already, I think it might be. I'm redoing some of them on the podcast so that people get them, but there's a clearing okay. grief medica- meditation, not medication, medication, but yeah, it's kind of a medication, right? <laughs> um, but that is a, well, it's a sound healing, not a med- meditation. It's an energetic one. Yeah. Cool. And okay. So that one will allow you to release the release, the release, the grief. Excellent. Um, okay. And that is cumulative. So the more you listen, the more it does. So it's not a one and done thing. Many of my students have done this and they're like, every time I listen, I feel better and better. I, I, I released this back in 2020 during the pandemic because everybody was in such grief for their lives. And so, you know, I've had a lot of responses from people on this one and it is super helpful. So, okay. Uh, Everything in this chakra. Hmm. No. It's more here than I thought. (laughs) What's that? Yeah, well, that's always the case. It's always the case. All right. So so there's a deep loneliness in this chakra. Mm -hmm. Um, And that feels like it's a function of not letting people in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you're trying to hold up a mask of I've got this all together. I'm the strong one. I'm the rock for everybody else, you know. There's a role that you're playing that is keeping you yeah. from being allowed to be human. Mm. And because you're not letting people in, there's a deep loneliness associated with it. Okay. And when we don't let love in for a long period of time, we create an internal dynamic with our inner child because the inner child doesn't know that we're choosing to not let the love in. The inner child only knows that they're not receiving love and therefore they create a story that says I'm not lovable. Mm. Okay. And so the, I'm not lovable combined with I'm everybody else's rock. I've got it all together. I have to be perfect says I am deeply lonely and unseen in my pain. Mm. Mm. And so the invitation is to be human to allow yourself to be as human as everybody else. When you give yourself permission to be human, other people will, people, you tell people how to treat you by your actions, by your, by your identity that you hold by, by the things that you do. When you say, no, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Right. And, and (laughs) I, you know, I love the, the acronym for fine, which is fucked up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. Right. (laughs) love it (laughs) fine yeah (laughs) but you know when we say that we tell people not to worry about us Mm. and you know then we don't get any attention when we need help right yeah then we don't ask for help until we're absolutely desperate and then we put ourselves in a position where we have to manipulate people to drop everything to take care of us because we didn't take care of ourselves sooner Mm, okay. Right? Yep. So we need yep. to ask early and ask often mm. because that way people have the ability to say no and we're not manipulating them. And if we have a long list of people we ask, then everybody can say yes every so often and it's something small every time. And then we're always in a good place instead of waiting till we're in meltdown mode on the floor going, I need somebody to pick me up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sound familiar? Yeah. Yeah. So let's see here. Yeah. Okay. So coming down into the third chakra. All right. So the chakra, this third chakra holds your inner child, your identity and your power. And this, so this is your, your will, your focus, right? Your intention setting space. This is the place from which you set commitments for yourself. And when we undermine our power, we have a hard time setting commitments for ourselves. So you have no problem setting commitments for others because that's the obligation piece and that's the responsibility for others piece and, you know, all the things. But so I'm going to look at the identity first. 
Okay. So, you know, those little blow up men that, um, that they have car dealerships where it's like, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, yes. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that guy, right? Um, that's the image I'm getting is that sometimes you're big and tall and then you fall down and then you're big and tall and then you fall down. Oh. Right? It's like you're, you're like this Gumby character in Made of Air, right? And, um, <laughs> and it, it's, a, it's an image. It's a glamour energetically. It's a glamour around... Uh, around being seen as bigger and more than you are. Mm. It's a way of avoiding transparency and authenticity, right? And I see this a lot in spiritual folks. Uh, It's a safety mechanism. It's a control mechanism, right? So what, you know, the invitation is to just turn off the fan and step out from behind the wall (laughs) where you were hiding and just be you right and and trust that being you is enough Mm -hmm. and we'll talk about the enough piece in the in the blocks but but that's the you know it's the pay no attention to the man behind the curtain thing right (laughs) from the wizard of oz right so okay um let me look at your inner child Ooh, cartwheels she's doing Mm -hmm. lots of cartwheels she's like look at me look at me look at me she's about five years five years old and uh, she's showing off her cartwheels and she's having a ball, man. Okay. So the good news is you have a good relationship with your inner child. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sometimes I, I see inner children and they're in dun- dungeons in dirty clothes and, yeah. dirty and they've been locked away. And, um, but you, you have a great relationship with your inner child, which means that, that your creativity around that energy your, your excitement energy, your naivete that brings the curiosity of the world, you know, all of these things are active in you. So that's a really good sign. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this looks great. Yep. No, everything looks copacetic there. All right. And then let's look into the blocks. Yeah, the not good enough, not lovable are there. We've talked about these sort of a lot right now. That's not surprising. The not good enough, again, is an illusion, right? Yeah. You are everything and everything is you. You are the ultimate creative force in the universe and everything is at your fingertips. It's not possible to be not good enough except through your belief structure. Hmm. So. Mm -hmm. If you let go of the belief, then you will automatically be, there's no such thing as good enough, right? Yeah. yeah. You, you are everything. So, yeah. So it's a, it's a, again, a duality issue, right? So the answer here is to step out of duality and into the level of experience where everything just is, there is no good or bad. There is no judgment. And that goes back to that fear of judgment that you were talking about. You're like, oh, I'm afraid yeah. being judged. It's like, well, but judgment yeah. only exists in duality. If I live yeah. in the level of experience where everything just is, then there, then judgment is irrelevant, right? Yep. Okay. So let's see here. Definitely got some martyr syndrome going on in here. It's like, I will <laughs> sacrifice myself on the altar of other people's happiness, right? Like, I. so I'm a big fan of you know, I have a, I have a lot of small practices that I do to support my belief in, you know, being able to receive and do a lot of other things. I love going to potlucks and you uh-huh. know big parties where they have big plates of food. And you know how on those big plates of food, everybody will take half and half and half, and they'll just leave a little piece on the plate. I take the last piece on every plate And I take it as a service to the hostess who wants to get those plates off the table, right? And I take it as a (laughs) gift of love from everybody who saved that piece for me. Hmm. Everyone saved that piece for somebody else. And I designate myself somebody else and I clear all the plates, okay? Then I receive all that love, everybody who did that. These are small acts that you can use as metaphors for your life, right? And so I'm, I'm the, I'll go through and clean it all out. I'll take the last thing of everything and then I'll bring the plates to the hostess, right? <laughs> like, here you go, right? <laughs> so, 
these, I want you to look for little ways in which you can receive. And I want you to question whether or not the ways in which you're martyring yourself are relevant, because oftentimes we martyr ourselves for people who never asked for our help in the first place. Mm. Mm. So you're not allowed to help unless somebody asks. That's the new rule. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Because that the uh, that's the other thing, and this is this is another way in which we are being limited in our power is we're being programmed to do for everyone else. And the world needs us right now. We mm. need to stop doing for everyone else and start doing for us because that is service to the world. Yep. We need to support ourselves and get ourselves out there because that is how we serve the world. Mm. Okay. All right. Yep. So, yep. yep, that's everything there. All right. Let me see what else is in here. Okay. So I'm, I'm getting a, it's not really a story so much as a fear of a response. It feels like there was a period of time in your life in which you walked on eggshells all the time. Yeah. Marriage number one. And that habit has not fully left you. That makes sense. And so I think, I mean, let me ask them what the path is for you on this one. Hold on. Yeah. So I want you to see yourself wearing stop. shoes and I want you to stop the eggshells. Mm -hmm. So this, this feels like it, it would be, so you know, that meditation where you're doing the receiving love for five minutes a day. Yeah, so I want you to receive the love for five minutes and then for the next two minutes or minute, doesn't have to be much. I want you to see yourself putting on your shoes and stomping on the eggshells. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Because that will help you break this pattern. Yeah. Okay. Because I don't feel like the, I don't feel like it's necessary for you to stomp on eggshells anymore. I just feel like this is a habit that you've built in. And then yeah. you just need to break it. And so, you know, yep. three, six weeks of stomping on the eggshells and you'll be done with this. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay. So anything else in here? Let me see. Yeah. So there's a little too big, too much in here. And this feels again, like the, the stomping on eggshells piece is going to address it. It's a, if you're, if you're big and you're a lot, then you'll get noticed and then you'll get stomped on, right? Yeah. So I want you to stomp the eggshells before they stomp you, right? Yep. So I think that'll, that'll take care of this one too. Yep. And, and I want you to, okay, so we're going to add a little bit to this. When you stomp the eggshells, I want you to go, ah, right? Or be, be big in some way, right? Yeah. I want you to just be like, look at me, look at me. I'm stomping the eggshells. Look at me, look at me, right? Just the, <laughs> the, the way of being big and bold and noticed, right? Yep. There's a, and there's a little bit of not important to, in here too. Okay. So the, one of the things that happens when we're in an abusive relationship is that we learn that we are, uh, that our needs are not necessary. Our needs are not important. And it's super important to, to treat. And we, yep. we internalize that sense, sense right? We right. internalize that belief structure and then we start to do it to ourselves. And so, you know, we look to others to undo it, but we are the ones who have to undo it for ourselves. So I want you to put yourself at the top of your own priority list. Yeah. Okay. And so that means making sure that you're not working past the time that you're exhausted. And that if that means you're done at noon, you're done at noon. Right. And it means, yeah. you know, not, not putting off your needs. Right. So, so an example of ways in which we don't take care of ourselves when we're feeling not important is we don't. And, and here's the smallest one. Okay. You ready? You're going to laugh. Pee when you have to pee, not when you finish the next three tasks. 
cheeks. Bloody being more cheek <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I have to pee. I'm gonna get up and pee now, right? Yeah. Uh, the you know when was the last time you went to a doctor, right? These are these are the ways in which we do not take care of ourselves. So go to the doctor. You know if you are in pain, deal with the pain, right? Do do something to get yourself out of pain. If yep. you need some sort of assistive tool that will help you, that's only gonna cost like twenty bucks, but you just they can't get around to order, order the damn tool, right? Just do what you need in order to yep. take care of you. Treat yourself as though you are the beloved in your life. If you would, if you would look at your partner and be like, you need to do this, then you need to do this, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah. Okay. That's everything. And this is always the biggest shocker for everybody. Yeah. So that That's, that's everything. So let's come down to the second chakra. Okay, so the second chakra is a little low energy. I don't know if you're going through menopause now, but <laughs> I think so. Yeah, so <laughs> that has a tendency to impact our second chakra. Mm -hmm. um, I, but again, it also, remember, we stole the creativity out of the second chakra and pulled it up into the sixth. So this one's going to be a little low energy because you've pulled energy out of it. But yeah. Feels like the the sex life is de declining as a result of the menopause. It feels like there's a there's some goop in here. That's a function of getting your hormones under control and talking to your doctor about that. The let's look at so there's there's a bunch of other things that live in here. Let me just check them. Fine with addictions. You do have some attachments going on in here. So yeah. attachments are when you are, when you have this vision of something and you say, this is the only way to X, right? Uh, right. I feel like you have something going on with that in your business right now. Mm -hmm. Like you've attached, you're like, this is the pathway and I have to get there this way. I'm going to tell you that that is not true. Yep. Okay. There, there are infinite possibilities and infinite ways to get where you want to go and to not attach to any one path, to not attach to any one way of being, okay? Yep. Let's see here. Anything else in this chakra? No. Okay, so that's everything there. Oh, cool. Okay, so coming down into the root chakra... So you got a little bit of fear around safety and security. This feels like it's left over. So have you ever done a vagus nerve reset? No. Okay. So I want you to go look that up. Okay. There's, in, there's lots and lots of things on the internet that can show you how to do that. Yeah. What happens when we are in abusive in, or traumatic environments is we end up going into our parasympathetic nervous system instead of our sympathetic nervous system, which puts us into hypervigilance and this constant state of alertness. Mm. And it heights, heightens our cortisol levels. It drains our adrenals because they're constantly pumping out adrenaline and, and it's really bad for our body, right? So you want to do a vagus nerve reset periodically because it is a default yeah. for you right now. I mean, it's been 19 years and you're still in this state. Well, so more than 20. Yeah. yeah. So, so you're going to want to do this, you know, two, three times a week until okay. you find that you're much more relaxed, right? I did this for the first time and I was just like, my whole life changed. <laughs> First oh. time I reset my vagus nerve, my whole life changed. I was like, oh my God, I feel so much better. I, wow. I literally couldn't worry about anything anymore. I was just like, <laughs> who knew? Ooh, this right? would be good. <laughs> so I highly recommend okay. that. I feel like that will, and let me just check. Yeah. So they're saying that'll work, but then there's also the habit of worrying. That is just simply a matter of, of saying, nope, it's fine. Right. Yeah. Sometimes we have to re-enroll that part of ourselves that is the worrier and say, mm -hmm. because it's just trying to keep us safe. Right. 
Yeah. And so what you, what you need to do is give it a different task and talk to that part of yourself that's constantly going, uh, <laughs> right? And you, you just yeah. say, it's okay. Everything's okay. Look around us. The room is fine. I have a roof over my head. I have food in my fridge. Nobody's coming to get me. Everything's fine. How about you go out and find opportunities for me to make money instead? That would mm. be awesome, right? Just give mm. it give it a different task, right? It just needs a, a, a job, right? Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm literally feeling uh, like there's a, a throbbing in my temple right now, or actually between my jaw and my temple. Do you get pain here? Yeah, in the temple I do. Yeah. Yeah. It's like right here. Right. Mm. So I'm, I'm, that <gasps> is actually causing that pain for you. Mm. So when you re-enroll that, that pain will go away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Cause I only get it when I'm stressed. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So that, that is causing that. Okay. So let's see. We already talked about the grounding see what else do we have oh interesting so i see a very small group of friends and what's interesting that is that they are all bound and gagged oh. and what that says to me is that the people you let in closest to you are told to to not tell anything to anybody about you that they are not to share about you <laughs> that there is a way in which you're trying to keep them from from it's like i only let in two or three people into my inner circle and if you break my confidence then you are out is sort of the energy that i'm getting could it be i just don't share it so they can't <laughs> It is possible. Yeah, that's another possibility. It's, it's like, 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 I think like, that's probably more accurate. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> I just don't tell blood. them. Yeah, they are, they're basically, they're, uh, what I'm seeing is gauze around their eyes and ears and then, you know, a <laughs> gag in their mouth, right? It's just, okay. that's what I'm no, seeing. Because there's nothing for them to tell because I don't there's tell nothing them. For them. Yeah. So. Yeah, that'll be why. <laughs> yet again, transparency. Yeah. Remember so that cute. deep loneliness in the heart? <laughs> that, you know, at some point, you know, allowing other people to see you will make yeah. you feel loved. Yeah. The other piece that we don't recognize when we're trying to yeah. be perfect is that it's, <laughs> it's, it's a karmic imbalance. Yeah. Right. It, it, people feel imbalanced. So mm. like, I remember a friend of mine was moving and she called me out of the blue and she said, help. And I was like, Oh my God, what? <laughs> like I've known her for like eight years, never heard help out of her mouth in my entire time I've known her. And I said, what's going on? She said, the movers will be here in two hours and my kitchen is not packed. And I have to be able to tell them what stuff is mine and what's my soon to be ex-husband's. And I can't be packing and doing that at the same time. I, I Help. And I had a coaching call scheduled for that day. And I called my client and I said, you know, that friend who never asks for help in your life. And she said, yeah, I said, mine just called and said, help. She said, go <laughs> she said, wow. we'll reschedule. And I'm like, okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> and I, I went and helped her, but, but I was so grateful to be able to do that for her because it allowed me to pay her back for all of the things she had done for me over the yeah. years. And yeah. yes. so, you know, when we open up and we let others in, it gives them the opportunity. It gives them the gift of giving to us, right? Because yeah. it feels good to give. It feels good to receive, but it also feels good to give. Absolutely. And if you never let any, uh, this, this whole thing that it's better to give than to receive is the biggest line of bullshit I've ever heard in my life. It's a binary system. If no one receives, no one can give. And if no one gives, <laughs> no one can receive. It's going to be an equal exchange. To exactly. Some extent, and it should yeah. be a balanced equal exchange in, in the long haul. Not in the short haul, because in the short haul, things change. But in the long haul. Yeah. Agree. You got to let mm -hmm. them in or else they can't yes. see you and they can't participate. And, yep. and so what happens is when you're in this state, you tend to surround yourself with people who are takers because people who are balanced and healthy people will be frustrated by the fact that they can't give. 
Yeah. Okay. And they will leave because they feel unbalanced and they feel the karmic imbalance. Mm. And so the only people who will stay when you're in this state are people who are happy to be takers. And then they will never be there when you need them because that's violating the contract you have with them. Your contract is I give and you receive and I get to feel good about myself. That's your contract. Your payment is feeling good about yourself. Yeah. That's the balance. So when yeah. you say, I want something back from you, they look at you like you're nuts. Like this is not our contract. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So okay. oftentimes when you make this shift, you will see your friend friends will shift. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm, let me check your let me check your I don't feel like we need to do the family tableau for you. You're good there, but let me let me check your manifestation bubbles. I think we know that things are gonna be a little slow, but because of the chrysalis state, but let me see mm -hmm. what's going on here. Mm, okay, so uh, there's a passion piece that's missing in the second chakra. And I feel like this is a crispy critter thing. You're burned out. So you can't be passionate when you're fried. Yeah. So that's slowing things down. If you, if you take this downtime that we were talking about for the chrysalis to happen, that, yeah, that dissolves. So I'm going to, let me just assume that that's done. And I'll see where we are with that. That's interesting. Okay. So what I'm seeing is that when you've done the be still thing for a while and, you know, just yeah. do the, do what you know how to do, the manifestation bubble will hit the third chakra and then explode out into the world, which is, it's one way of manifesting because it's, it's exploding in every direction, but it's not the highest form of manifesting. And so what's going to happen is you'll get things coming in and they'll come in at speed, but yep. they may come in a little sideways because they're being impacted by your belief structure around the issues that we talked about in the third chakra. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. the piece there is going to be about clearing up those. And so as you clear those up, let me, let me see how it goes from there. Yeah. So you will have financial success once you have finished your chrysalis financial, financially money will come in. Mm -hmm. but it's going to be a little bit of a process for you to get through the other stuff. It's going to mm -hmm. be a while. Okay. And so, you know, it's fine, but it's going to be a journey for you. Okay? Yay. <laughs> there's, there's some work to do around that. It's going to, it's, yep. yeah, it's going to come in stages. So not a problem because the business will be up and running. You'll be successful. It'll be fine, but you, you are going to need to continue to, to dig in and do these other pieces, right? Because a lot of this for you is around the approval piece and that approval piece. When, when you're asking for money from clients, you can either get money or you can get validation or you can get a combination. If you're, if you're asking for validation in any way, you're going to undercharge because you're going to understand that, that they're, the payment is coming partially in validation and partially in money. Right. Mm, okay. And so you just want to keep that in mind as you go through the process. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. I think that's everything that I have for you. As I said, I told people it's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. My goodness. Do you have any questions? <laughs> Where would I start? <laughs> I've got like six and a half pages of notes here. Um, no, that was like parts of it, yeah, spot on, the parts I was aware of. There was some yeah. parts that um, the chrysalis I, I really resonated with because I feel like I've been like ready to go. <laughs> and like I'm getting clients, like they come in spurts and then it's yeah. crickets and then there's a few more and then there's crickets again. It's just like, come on. Remember that um, Jack in the Box? Yeah. 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 And I've not been consistent with my marketing either. So I know I have myself partly to blame for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, but that makes a lot of sense. So there's a lot of homework I've got to do now and I'm 
sure you'll check in with me at some point and make sure I've done it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, no, and, that's awesome. Yeah. So there's, there's a bunch of stuff. Um, you know, if you decide you want to do some deeper work, the, the welcome to the woo or uh, rather the woo squared program would be really good for you. And if you decide that you want to do that with help, but you, get know, some, you know, money, happening yeah, but, but that's yeah. where the money's going to be fine. Once you do the chrysalis thing, the money's going to come pouring in and then you'll be ready to come and do that. So yeah, absolutely. I'll be good. But, I mean, um, I mean, <laughs> yeah. So, so be still, right. That's yeah. the key for you right now is to, to be still and be with, and then as you're doing that, hire somebody in to help you stop Jack in the boxing. And yeah. then you can just, here's the thing. And this is the one thing that, that this is the biggest piece of advice I ever got from anybody that worked, right? The best mm-hmm. piece of advice, do one product, which is your readings right now yeah. to one target market using yeah. one lead magnet and one yeah, platform yeah. for one year. If you yes. do that, you will be highly successful at whatever you do. You have to commit, yeah. right? And the commitment, it comes from that third chakra stuff, right? Yeah. So when you can get through that, you'll be, co- you'll be styling. Yep. Okay. So you got this. I believe in you. I can do it. <laughs> can you can so i will remind you that you're going to get the recording of this so okay when you get the recording what happens is that people tend to listen to this over and over again and they will get eight or ten lessons through and then they'll call me up and be like oh my god there's something new on my recording and i'm like <laughs> and i'm like that's not new it's always been no, there it was always there not yep. ready to hear it <laughs> And so well, that's what happens when I do mine as well. Point. It's just right? like I really listen to went, oh, hang on, there's more information there. I didn't hear that the first time. Yeah, so, yeah. Exactly. So that happens a lot. So I would say listen and listen and listen and listen until you can hear it all. Okay. Yeah. That's why we do okay. the recording. Right. Because, you know, even, even when you're taking notes, you'll have tuned out during the time that I said something. And so it won't be in your notes, right? It's, it's, that's just how the nature. Yeah, and I'm not a great note taker, but I did take a lot today. So, yeah. yeah. So, okay. How are you feeling? Awesome. Thank you so much. Ready for a nap. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, it's time for bed for you. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's oh, more yeah. than a nap. I think it's a whole night's sleep. See, this is perfect because now you can go straight to sleep with all this information having just been downloaded. And now yeah. you'll be able to like integrate during your sleep. It's perfect timing. Absolutely. No, thank all you right. so much, Kelly. Really appreciate that. Fantastic. It. it was great talking to you. Thank you for being the, uh, the, the guinea pig for the podcast so people could know what to expect. No, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll see you soon. And that's really all we have it. for this week. Please tune in next week when we start uh, back into our cycle of mystical Mondays and align Wednesdays and ascend Fridays and then the tap in Tuesdays and the Thursday thoughts. And oh my God, I don't know what the hell I'm doing with giving you so much content, but you know, hey, you'll pick the stuff you want to listen to and it'll be the right things. So, and I, this is my one thing. So. <laughs> I'm doing my own advice. This is my one platform that I am doing my, my marketing on. So come and see us next time. We'll, and don't forget that the, the things you focus on, the things you put your attention on are the things that, that are attracted into your life. The things that you place your intention into are the things that you create. So choose wisely young Jedi. Have a good one. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh, 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 o